Hey, um, I'm creating a new recipe um, for an old um, favorite for my family. It's um, called dill bread, and I'm making a marinated flank steak tonight, and we were traditionally would make this um, dill bread. So I'm redoing this to a keto version, and if you get to see this video, it means it turned out good. So otherwise, I guess it's lost. <laughs> so anyway, um, I had already got started, so let me just kind of catch you up to where I am, because I've only really done one step. In this bowl, it's one cup of cottage cheese, and I use the lactate version because that's what works for me. Um, so it's one cup, so this is two cups, so I used half of this, so it's eight ounces of cottage cheese, and then approximately two cups of shredded mozzarella, okay? And then all I've done so far, you just kind of stir it up, just lightly, it doesn't have to be like well mixed or anything like that, and then I just put it in the microwave until the mozzarella, you see, just kind of starts to melt and the cheese is hot. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and put this in our food processor. If you over melt it, you'll find it's really hard to get out of the food processor, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to mix this up until it's smooth, okay? Okay, I'm gonna do that a little bit longer. That was at low speed, I'm gonna pick it up to high speed. Okay, so that was approximately 30 seconds on low speed and 30 seconds on high speed. Um, I will tell you it is, let's do this so you can kind of see it. You can kind of see, everything's all mixed up in there. It is pretty smooth, there's a slight texture to it, but I think because this is gonna be in bread, I don't think we're gonna notice this. Typically when I make, dips of things with the kai cheese. I um, blend it till it's smooth first, but this time um, we did not do that um, because I wanted it to be um, incorporated in with the um, mozzarella. So now to this, it's gonna be really important that you add the ingredients in this order. So the next thing I'm gonna add is gonna be almond flour, okay? So we're gonna do, I'm gonna guess here, I'm gonna guess two cups is what we're gonna start with. I am gonna add eggs, but I don't wanna add the eggs until after the almond flour, and the reason is, is right now, this was in the microwave, and so it was warm. And so by adding the almond flour to it, it'll start to incorporate it, and then it'll also cool down the melted cheese so that when I add the eggs, they won't start cooking. So that's um, the reason I'm doing it this way right now. Okay, so that's another 30 seconds on high. And again, this is well incorporated. I'm gonna let you see. So this is what it looks like now. So now what we're gonna add is I'm gonna go ahead and add um, some dill. So this is just organic dill weed. And um, we're gonna add probably mm, one to two teaspoons. It's kind of eyeballs, probably about two teaspoons. We really like the dill. This is kind of what makes the steak that I'm doing, I'll give you the marinade recipe for it later, but the steak is um, marinated in wine and dill and garlic. Um, it's one of my family's favorites, which is why the dill bread with it is so nice because it complements it. It's got some of the similar flavorings to it. So um, normally I use minced onion and um, I don't have any, but I knew that I had some powdered onion. I didn't like what they had today at the store. So I'm gonna add just maybe half a teaspoon, not near as much of that. And, um, and also I couldn't find organic um, minced onion. That was the other reason I didn't use that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and add some coconut flour. Okay. I'm gonna do about three tablespoons. That should be good, of coconut flour. Um, next is gonna be baking soda. So that is about a teaspoon of baking soda. Just kind of help the rise a little bit. We're gonna mix this up and then we'll add the eggs in. And then I will also add at that point more um, of the uh, almond flour. Now at this point, I can actually pull this up and add my eggs in this way. So I don't have to take my whole lid off. So that's kind of nice. We're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so it's about another 30 seconds on high. Oh yeah, the eggs incorporated really nice. This is kind of like what this dough looks like so far. And it's still just a tad bit stickier than I'd like for these. So I'm gonna add what we used to call 
Some of you will be old enough to recognize this term. We're gonna add what's called a scant cup. So what that means, it's a little bit shy of a cup. So it's probably about seven eighths of a cup, which really isn't normally a measurement. So um, as you can see, my cup is just a little bit shy. It's a little bit more than three fourths, but it's not quite a cup. So we're gonna do a scant cup is what I'm gonna add now. So if you're keeping track, that is two full cups and one scant cup. So almost three cups. I'm gonna mix to get on high. Okay, let's see how it looks. Okay, it looks great. So, here we have the dough, you can see. And what's great is it all ends up being in this one bowl, okay? Now when you take these out, be super careful um, because these blades are very, very sharp, okay? So you wanna always pull away from them. And if you're not used to doing them, you can do this with this um, with a spatula that's probably for most of you a safer option. Okay, so now we have our dough here. I have my scoop. And I have a half pan lined with parchment paper. My oven is set to um, 350. And basically, I'm just going to scoop these out and um, make rolls out of them. So, in the original recipe that I did this, we actually did it in a um, in a pan. It was a soft. It was called spoon bread. The reason this is a, basically a, a, I've altered a traditional fat fat dough, which is the um, mozzarella cheese and cream cheese, by using the um, cottage cheese. And the reason I did that is because the cottage cheese, first of all, is better for you. It's lower fat, and it's also um, higher in protein. And so that's always something we're trying to um, to increase especially if you're um, focusing on, on weight loss or if you're doing um, keto. You have to be very careful, you know, um, those of you that follow me know that I actually do a um, low-fat keto. I don't do the traditional um, high-fat keto um, for health reasons because I just don't feel like it's, it's healthy, um, the fat content, and it's, you know, not good for your cholesterol levels and everything, although it can achieve your weight loss goals. Uh, my choice to do keto is a lifelong choice. So you can see I'm just taking the end of this batter, and it's really thick, and I'm just putting it back in the scoop so that I get another, so I get on my scoop. So right now I have nine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flatten these a little bit so that they'll bake consistently. Now when you do this, if you want to neaten them up and make them um, a little rounder or whatever you can, when you, when you flatten them out, sometimes they, um, they go a little oblong on the shape. The most important thing for you to do is when you're doing these is to get the thickness about the same. So even if one biscuit or roll, whatever you call them, is a little bigger than the others, it's really important that they are the same thickness. Can you see how nice these are? Okay, now we're gonna bake these in the oven at 350. I'm thinking they're gonna take about 20 minutes. That's what my um, my other biscuits normally take. And um, this, I'm hoping this has more of a roll texture. Um, that's really kind of what I'm going for. So um, we're gonna throw them in the oven and we'll see what they're like when they come out. I'll see you soon. Hey, this is gonna be um, part two of dinner. So dinner tonight is gonna be some marinated flank steaks. Um, I'm gonna do some roasted cauliflower and I randomly had two sweet potatoes that I just hadn't used So I'm gonna throw those in with the cauliflower and just roast them together because I have them um, I won't eat them, but my husband will enjoy them. Um, I just don't um, First of all, I'm just not a big fan of sweet potato. Let's be honest and number two um, If you follow me, you know, I don't really do many carbs. So if I'm gonna have carbs I'll probably have an apple or something later. I don't think I'm gonna waste it on a sweet potato That's just me, but if you like sweet potatoes and you're not watching your carbs then by all means, enjoy them. Or maybe like me, somebody in your family does. So um, I hope as you as you watch and cook with me that you'll, um, you'll learn more than just what I'm doing, but learn how to make things your own. Um, the basic thing I wanted to do tonight with our dinner was to roast cauliflower. That just, I love this roasted cauliflower. Um, I used to make it a lot and I just, for whatever reason lately, I haven't been making as much as I used to. And um, so I just really kind of got a craving for it. So um, this is just a head of cauliflower. As you can see, I've just been de-stemming it while I'm chatting with you. And I've got the bottom, so it's like this. So this was the stalk that I just cut off. So now this is what we have, okay? And then what you wanna do with your knife is you're gonna wanna go in and see how this has sections? You're gonna wanna cut these sections off, okay? Like so. 
so that you get a section like this. Once we get this, what we're gonna do, because you see how then there's many sections in there, is we're just gonna go in and cut those up like so. You can also break them up if you'd rather, if you don't want to um, cut them. If you really um, want to be thrifty, um, you could also take this core. Um, I'm personally gonna throw it away, but you could take it if you had a um, food processor, you could take it and rice it and use it for um, rice cauliflower. I'd probably add it to another head so it wasn't all core, but um, you absolutely could take this core, trim the leaves off this and use it um, in rice cauliflower because I'm here to tell you that's what they're doing at the grocery store. If you're already buying it that way, that's what they're doing, how they're doing it. So again, whatever is easier for you, sometimes these just break up real easy. Um, I like to get them as um, small as possible without them like breaking into these little pieces like this. If I can get little pieces like this, that's my preference. Now, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're more like this. But I'll tell you why I like the little ones because then we're gonna make this olive oil and mayo um, rub to go on them. And so the smaller they are, the more of that seasoning that there is. So if you get one, see how far up this kind of is, a lot of stock, just cut that back. And then it's easier to just break them. Often you can get those littler pieces, okay? And I'm gonna leave that um, other stock piece in there. I don't mind these stocks that are so close to the florets, as they're called, with broccoli and cauliflower. I'm just not a fan of the middle stock. It's just a little bit much for me. So, um, it seems like today that using my hands seems to be going better, so that's what we're gonna do. Again, using a if using a knife is better for you, then do that. It's, it's totally fine, whatever works for you. It's more important that you're cooking and doing it and you're trying new things, okay? So we're gonna take this cauliflower, and um, we're almost done here. I'm gonna set it aside for a minute. We're gonna also chop up, I've got two sweet potatoes um, that I've already peeled. I'll show you those here in a minute. And then um, we're going to cut up the sweet potatoes into small pieces as well. And we're just going to toss them right in the, um, the marinade or dressing, whatever you want to call it. So there's my head of cauliflower, right? By the way, I priced it, and you can get just the florets. I think it's the same price as, um, as a head of cauliflower is, but I think you're only getting about half. So you can decide if you wanna get the florets, that is um, totally fine to do. Um, just be aware that you may need to get two packages for every head. Um, when I used to do this for my family, I mean now it's just me and my husband, but when I used to do it for my family, I used to easily do two to three heads at a time and we'd have um, 4th of July dinner or whatever um, because me and my girlfriend would actually, by waiting for dinner, we would eat like a whole pan, like a whole head of cauliflower. Um, the flavor when you roast it is just so different. So you can see here, all I've done is cut the sweet potato up into slices and then I'm just taking each of those slices and cutting them into fours. So each slice got cut into fours. So that's how, how that is. Now I did notice there's a bad spot on this one. So what do you do, Miss Crystal? Well, we're gonna see, I had tried to use the um, vegetable peeler. So I used a peeler to take the skin off and um, I kept going down. If you can kind of see how flat that is there and it was just still there. So I'm gonna just cut a little deep rips, hold on to this good right here and see, oh yeah, that wasn't bad. So I was able to just get this chunk out. You can see that's all the deeper it goes. So we're gonna put this aside and then we're gonna use the rest of the sweet potato. It totally um, is not gonna hurt it at all to use the rest of that. So um, so that's just what we're gonna do. We're just gonna use the rest of that. We're gonna cut this up um, into the rest of those chunks. This is a smaller sweet potato, so there aren't quite as many pieces to it. And then um, we're gonna make this marinade. Now for this marinade, <clears throat> what we've got here, so I've got this side, again, our sweet potato and head of cauliflower. We've got our fancy big red Tupperware bowl I've had forever. We're gonna use olive oil only because I'm out of avocado oil today. Normally I would probably use avocado oil and this is about a fourth of a cup. So you can see in there, that's about a fourth of a cup. And then this is one of my favorite mayonnaise. This is an avocado oil mayonnaise, okay? It's not made with soybean oil or any of the other um, oils that are not good for you. Um, another good one is Sir Kensington. That's another good brand that I like. Um, this one happens to be Primal um, Kitchens. 
Um, I like, I do a lot of Primal Kitchens because they, um, they don't put sugar in there. About a half a cup, and you guys can see it. So there's about half a cup of the mayo. The first thing we're gonna do is just mix the mayo with the olive oil. Okay, kind of mash it up. It doesn't have to be like completely mixed, but it'll mix pretty easy. I'm using a fork so I can kind of mash a little bit as kind of as I go. Um, and again, it's just, I'm just wanting to get a liquid, okay? Um, if it's clumpy, a little bit lumpy, it's okay. It's no big deal. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is the seasoning of your choice. The seasoning that I have is one that I'm really sad that I can't get anymore. Um, so I've used a couple other ones. You know, the one that I get, um, I'll show you. This is one of my favorite ones. I've, I've used this one before too. What you have to be careful, this one is a little more salty than I like for this application. On steaks and stuff, it doesn't bother me, but it's a little bit saltier than I'd like. So this one is actually from Wild Tree and um, you can't get it anymore. But um, it's carne asada seasoning. So if you find a carne asada seasoning, um, this is, it's sulfate free, um, salt free, and I really like it because it's just the spices. Um, and I really miss being able to order those from there. So anyway, so pick the seasoning out that you like. Um, some type of carne asada. If you want, you want something less spicy, you could just do a dry rub, a, a barbecue dry rub um, would be really good. And so we just have this all mixed up. See how it is? It's all good. And then all we're going to do, super easy here. The reason we use the soft cutting boards is we can just fold them and dump our cauliflower and sweet potatoes right in here. And then we're just gonna stir this to coat. You just keep stirring and keep stirring until all of them are coated. And even if you think you don't quite have enough, just keep doing it. Okay. All right, so now these, it, it's amazing because you're gonna think, oh, that wasn't enough in there for all this I've got. It is amazing. I could have even probably done you know, another sweet potato or two in here and still plenty. So this is kind of how those look, okay? So now I'm gonna get um, a cookie sheet and put parchment on it and then we're gonna bake them at 400 degrees, okay? Okay, so I have my cookie sheet with the parchment on it. And then all we're doing is we're going to put this in here. And then you really just wanna spread it out so it's a single layer so it will um, cook well. If you have a convection um, oven, it is ideal for this just because um, convection works similar to an air fryer. It moves the air. If you want to do this in an air fryer, be in smaller batches, you absolutely could also do this in an air fryer and it would be really great because that air kind of dries things out and kind of roasts them um, and a little bit better. So anyway, we're going to throw this in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. We're going to be stirring it about every five. Um, so that all sides get all um, cooked and, um, and brown and caramelized and it'll be so yummy. And so um, I'll bring you back um, whenever we put this all together. Um, this is a marinated flank steak. So flank steak, um, sometimes called um, skirt steak, but it's not really, the skirt is below the flank. So the flank is like up here and then the skirt steak is below it. The skirt steak is typically what's used in fajitas. So if you ever go to a Mexican restaurant and get fajitas, it's typically the skirt steak. Sometimes they will also use the flank steak um, just because there's um, it's just a supply thing. Um, the flank steak um, is a very lean cut, which is one of the reasons I like it. You can see here, okay. And any fat that you're seeing here, this is just surface fat. It's not fat that like runs all the way through, like whenever you see like a ribeye or anything like that. And then let me show you this other side here. I'll grab this difference, you can see it. So then here's the top. And again, you can see that is just surface fat. Um, and I've had this marinating overnight. So I marinated it overnight and then I flipped it halfway. So both sides have had about 12 hours. Um, so let me tell you what the marinade is. We'll start with that. So um, you can use, I use wine. You can use red or white wine. As most of you know, I typically use white, just as what I have on hand. We don't really drink wine very much, but I do cook with it a lot. And the white is more flexible. I can add the white to um, a cream sauce. Um, if I add the red to a cream sauce, it turns pink. And so I just, I don't typically buy the red wine since it's not something that I drink. Um, so it's a half a cup of wine of your choice. 
um, a half a cup of water. Now when I use water in cooking, I always use um, purified water. Um, and we happen to use alkaline water. That doesn't matter if you use that or not, but that just happened to be what we use. We use a purified alkaline water is what we drink. And so I use our drinking water um, for this, this marinade. And um, so you put the wine and the water together and then it'll be another fourth cup of lemon juice, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce and two tablespoons of um, tamari, which is a soy free soy sauce. So um, it's just, it's not soy free, it's um, gluten free, gluten free soy sauce. So, um, and that's why we use the tamari instead of regular soy sauce because it is gluten free. So, and then to that, when she mixed those together, um, I, I take three to four cloves of garlic, depending on their size, um, chop them up real fine. You can use a garlic press, whatever, put those in, and then um, one to two tablespoons of dill weed. And you can kind of see, and this is what you're gonna get. Can you kind of see how much is in the pan? This is a big glass pan. Always use glass, never use metal, because the um, acids in the wine and things will react with the metal, and you'll get a metallic taste, so don't do that. So use glass um, if you needed to use plastic you could. I have done it in um, like those big oversized Ziploc bags. I have done on that. You just have to be very careful when I do it in those. I usually double bag them just to make sure they don't leak and make a mess in my fridge. So the other thing I do before I throw this on, I've got the George Foreman going here. I want to make sure you can kind of see this. Can you see those cut marks? So I made cut marks all the way across. There, can you see them? Okay, so these are all the way across, and I did this before I put it in the marinade, and I did it on both sides, and so they're not very deep. You just take the tip of your knife and literally just run it across, and so you do it one way, and then I turn my knife and do it the other way, and they're literally all the way across, and they are on both sides, okay? And so that just really helps the marinade to um, absorb deep into the meat um, for flavor. And then all we're gonna do now is throw it on George Foreman. Now I've done this, my favorite way is to make it on a traditional grill, um, but I have also done it in the oven under a broiler. Um, but the George Foreman, if I'm gonna have to do it inside, is my preference. It just cooks it more consistently and it also cooks it quicker because it cooks it from the top and the bottom at the same time. So literally, we just put it in the George Foreman. We're gonna let that cook for about seven minutes. We have our rolls in the oven and our cauliflower and sweet potatoes, and I will come back and um, show it to you and hopefully everything will turn out right. Those rolls are looking good, so I'm hoping they're good. So um, we'll see you in a little bit. Hi, so we're back and we have our wonderful rolls here. They've pulled them up, I can grab this pan. Would you see those? So these are our um, onion dill rolls. I'm super excited about that. This is a low carb, no flour, grain free recipe. It's made with almond flour. Um, so no traditional flour in that. It's keto friendly. It's also grain free for those of you who need that option. And this is our roasted cauliflower and sweet potato. I just pulled this out of the oven. It cooked for about 30 minutes. And so I've not done the sweet potato with it before, but it really smells yummy. And I did a carne asada seasoning. Um, and again, you could do just a barbecue dry rub seasoning. Um, just be careful to get one that doesn't have uh, much salt in it. I just find whenever you roast it with the salt, because everything condenses in flavor, which is really great, but whenever you have a lot of salt in it, it just becomes more salty, and to me, it's just a little bit more than I prefer. So now, I also have our steak ready. So, we did this, I um, left you, I was putting this on the George Foreman. So, here's what we're gonna do with this really quick here. I'm gonna take this bowl. We've got these wonderful um, plastic cutting mats, right? They're PVC friendly. And I'm gonna drain because I have let this rest. So this has been resting about 20 minutes. I took this off the George Foreman. Let it sit and rest while the, um, the veggies and stuff were finishing up. So now you can see we've got our steak. This is totally cooked. And now what we're gonna do is cut it. And this is, um, one of the most important parts is how you cut this. Now my preference, because I've cut a lot of these, um, this one's a little bit wide, so I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. Oh yeah, it's cooked perfect, it's beautiful. And because it's rested for an hour, the other thing I can let you kind of see, look how beautiful that is, just light pink. We got this down to about a medium well. Um, is I'm gonna cut it, 
can I make you see here? Go back, there we go. I'm cutting it on the diagonal this way, okay? So I cut the steak in half this way, and now I'm cutting it this at the diagonal. So I'm not cutting straight down, I'm cutting at the diagonal. And the reason is, is because um, flank steak is a very lean cut of steak. And so by cutting across the grain this way, it makes it easier to, um, to chew. And um, so it makes it more tender. Sometimes um, I've had it where it's, you know, just really lovely. And I've had other times whenever it just is um, a little bit chewier. And if you do this, it really makes this cut just a lot more um, tolerable. This is why in um, the restaurants, I've got a little piece of fat that I'm cutting off back here, um, that you'll see if you ever go to buffet or whatever, this is how they often cut that because they use a, a less expensive cut of meat than say like a filet, which is really expensive. So see here's the, the texture, I got that light pink in there and that's just gonna be so much easier um, to chew because I cut that off. And then I'm gonna pull this last little bit of fat. This is literally all the fat that was on it. I left it on it to cook um, because there really wasn't much fat and it wasn't marbled through it on this particular um, cut of meat. And so what we do is if there's no fat on it, sometimes you give them there's like literally no fat. I'll even put, um, oh, a quarter cup of um, avocado oil or grapeseed oil in the marinade with it, okay? The other thing about the flank steak is typically one end is um, a little bit thinner than the other end. Um, and what that means is, is when you're cooking it, you're gonna get one end that's a little bit more medium well or medium. And then the other end down here where it's more done, let me grab a piece, is gonna be more on the well done. Okay, so if you have family that um, likes it more on the rare side, you're just not gonna wanna cook it quite as long in that regard. So I intentionally cooked it um, a little bit longer because this particular cut of steak I like cooked a little bit longer. So let me put a plate together for you. I'm so excited about this. We haven't had this um, in a while and these new rolls turned out so good. Oh my gosh, they are so yummy. So we'll plate this up so you can kind of see what this is gonna look like. So we're just gonna take literally a couple pieces of this meat, kind of plate this up. Okay, so I'm just plating that up like this. We'll take you over here with me now. We're gonna get our veggies. Okay. I'm gonna take a few of the sweet potatoes. I don't do many of mine, I do wanna taste one. So I'm just gonna get one there to taste. And then we have a roll. So there we have it. We have our fling steak, our roasted veggies, and our homemade low carb rolls with the dill and onion. So it's so yummy. I've got to see, I want to taste the sweet potato. I know what the other tastes like. Mm, it's really yummy. So it's a sweet potato and it's roasted, but it has a savory seasoning, like a kind of similar to a barbecue seasoning on it. So um, if you like the savory um, sweet potato, um, I think you'll really enjoy that. And these rolls, did I show you the middle of one of these a minute ago? Look at those, they are just so soft and nice on the inside. The texture is beautiful. So I am so excited about this. I hope you'll try these recipes and, um, and enjoy. And if you try it, please let me know that you do. Have a great evening and eat well.